that are collected from both the private and public sector. In terms of National Development Section 13.1c of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, on the number 28, 2013, here in Africa, we refer to the Constitution. It provides that the state must endeavor to facilitate rapid and equitable development in particular, must take measures to foster the development of industrial and commercial enterprises in order to empower Zimbabwe citizens. Universities and tertiary institutions shall therefore produce industries measured by the number of startups they produce. Honorable members, it is a fact that if you want to predict the future of any nation, just look at what that nation teaches each other in the school, in the colleges and universities. Thus, our strategies are focused on our education as a tool for emancipation and national advancement. Since there is no one who dishes out money to us as a country and that we just receive. The issue here which we are saying is that all what we have, we have to work for. All what we have, we must pay for. In this regard, the government of Zimbabwe directed the ministry to configure its education from Education 3.0 to Education 5.0 to make sure whatever education we give, it must result in productivity in this nation. The implementation of this heritage-based Education 5.0 is premised the successful implementation is premised on five pillars. One, whenever we take students for programs, we must be saying, what are they learning? What are we learning? Because what we are learning is the promise that will make this country industrialized or not industrialized. So that we talk about prosperity instead of poverty. We talk about sweat for productivity rather than sweat for senselessness. Number two, it is the formation of staff and infrastructure that for us to save our students well, we need staff that is competent, that is able to industrialize and modernize this country. The other one is physical infrastructure, which makes sure that we have to have, strive to have state-of-the-art physical infrastructure. <laughs> then the financial infrastructure must be up to scratch, as well as the legislative framework, which is the responsibility of this House. It is the financing infrastructure and the legislative framework that I'm going to talk more about today, since the petition is mainly talking about the financing infrastructure and how we uh, put the legislative framework for that financing infrastructure. Honorable members, my ministry appreciates that in terms of Section 21A of the Constitution of Zimbabwe, the state and all institutions of the government at every level must take reasonable measures to ensure that youths have access to appropriate education and training. I guess by Education 5.0, we are trying to address this issue of appropriate education and training. In this regard, some citizens through this petition parliament the Portfolio Committee on IH Education has petitioned the Ministry on the fees, on the fees issue. This paper serves to tackle the issues related to the petition from a constitutional and legal point of view. I want to start with the legislative framework. First of all, the Constitution, the right to education is provided for in terms of 75, Section 75 of the Constitution. Subsection 1b, there, which provides that every citizen and permanent resident of Zimbabwe has a right to further education, which the state, through reasonable legislative and other measures, must make progressively available and accessible. Subsection 4 of Section 75 provides that the state must take reasonable legislative and other measures within the limits of the resources available to it to achieve the progressive realization of the right set up in subsection 1. This means that progressive realization of the right to further education is subject to availability of resources. I further elaborate on the measures taken by the government 
to ensure the right to education is progressively realized. In terms of, of, sex, of section 75, 1A is read with section 27 is free and compulsory basic education for children. The intention of the legislature by expressly mentioning this was to address the mischief whereby people would think that all education is for free. This section shows that basic education is what the state should take practical measures to provide for free. Higher education is not for free. The right to education as it relates to further education is therefore limited by the availability of resources. Although the state must try to make sure that it's accessible. The government has made efforts to ensure that the right is progressively realized through coming up with student financing policy schemes and scholarships. A student, just like any other citizen, has a right to freedom of expression. Of particular interest to students, section, section 61 of the Constitution, 61C of the Constitution, which guarantees academic freedom. Academic freedom refers to research and teaching with responsibility. This section gives all universities operational autonomy in terms of teaching, research, community service, innovation, and industrialization. However, academic freedom is limited to this only. Even subsection 5 of section 61 of the Constitution provides that it excludes A, incitement to violence, B, advocates of hatred or hate speech, C, malicious injury to a person's reputation or dignity, and D, malicious or unwanted breach of a person's right privacy. Attached here to is an article to the academic freedom. I've given for your benefit uh, the a, a expansion of the word academic freedom. This is very important and you have actually alluded to it, um, Honorable Chair, at the beginning of this session. Zimbabwe has 13 state universities in terms of Section 12 of the University of Zimbabwe Act, Chapter 2516, and Section 11 of the other University Act, the university is a separate legal entity with the capacity to sue and be sued in its own name. The students of one university cannot impose any obligations on the students of another university. Specifically, the voice of the student from the particular university is heard through the university's representative council, SRC, elected in terms of the University Act. The president of the SRC actually sits in the university council. This is in terms of section 11, subsection 1D of the University of Zimbabwe Act, and the following sections, 49, 10.1D uh, for Midlands, it's, um, it's the 10.1D for Chinoy University, for Midlands State University, for Valley University, and for the rest of the universities. This shows that the extent of recognition and importance that is placed on the SRC by the legislature, and as such, no one should use the powers of the SRC. In addition to the internal limitations under Section 61, the right to freedom of expression is also limited in terms of Section 86 of the Constitution. In terms of Section 1, they have the fundamental rights and freedom set out in Chapter 4 of the Constitution must be exercised reasonably and with regard for the rights and freedom of other persons. They have boundaries set up by the rights of others and by important social concerns such as public order, safety, health, democratic values, as the Section 75, Subsection 4 of the Constitution. The state must take reasonable legislative measures to achieve the progressive realization of the right to education. In such, universal acts have been enacted. The university, all universities acts under the objects and powers of the university provide that the, for the achievement of its objects. The university shall have the power to demand and receive fees, such fees as from time to time be prescribed or by in terms of the statutes or ordinances as the case may be. This is provided for in the following sections of all the state universities. I won't bother you by reading one by one. Each university is administered in accordance with statutes or ordinances, as the case may be. These statutes or ordinances are made by council with approval of the minister. These statutes or ordinances may provide
provide the fees and charges to be paid by students, specifically under those specific sections. So, Section 27, subsection 1H of the MDS of Zimbabwe Act provides that council, with the approval of the minister, may make ordinances providing for the accounts to be kept, funds to be established, maintained, and all matters relating to the regulation of finances of the MDS. Now, I want to move on to fees changes procedure at any university. Fees adjustments are proposed by the university based on the financial needs of both the students and the university. The BESA combines the needs based on what is presented by different departments or faculty. The BESA submits the combined information to the Dean of Students. The Dean of Students convenes a meeting with the student to discuss the fees adjustment. After that matter is taken to the Student Affairs and Fees Revision Committee, the composition of this committee includes a member of the University Council, the Vice Chancellor, the Pro Vice Chancellor, the Registrar, the BESA, the Dean of Students, Senior uh, Chaplain, President of the SRC, a member of Senate, Dean's Representative, and the Director of Campus Life and Student um, Development Programs. Honorable Chair, I want to submit that. I have all the minutes of the fees revision committees with me. The ministry is not part of the student affairs or fees revision committee. The committee's terms of reference include the reviewing fees charged by the university and to submit recommendations through the finance committee to council. All views of the students are considered and taken into account at the this meeting and the committee's meeting. Council will adopt the recommendations of the committee with or without changes. Madam Chairperson, I have all the minutes of the fees revision committees held with all evidence of the involvement of students. Ministerial approval. After council approval, the university then compiles a draft application in the form of draft statutes or ordinances, or it's a statutory issue, which is sent to the minister for approval. The, the reason being that, as already alluded on to earlier in terms of the above cited provisions of the University Act, ordinances or statutes are made by council with the approval of the minister. The mischief that the legislature intended to remedy by including the minister was the, as the ultimate approval of the fees is to safeguard decisions which may frustrate the constitutional obligation explained earlier that the state must take practical measures to promote the right age. If universities are allowed to charge exorbitant fees beyond the range of men, it will be tantamount to frustrating the right to education as provided for in the Constitution. Yet we satisfied ourselves that students were consulted and that the fees were below those that were charged in 2018. We saw no reason not to approve the adjustment. Once the minister approves the ordinance, we'll be ready for implementation. It becomes law. Current fees ordinance. The fees ordinances of 2021 are as follows. University of Zimbabwe, ordinance number 59 of 2021. NAST, ordinance number 25 of 2021. BUSE, ordinance number 13A and 13B. ZO, ordinance number 36. MSU, ordinance number 29A. CAT, ordinance number 2 of 2021. GZU, ordinance number 23 of 2021. LSU, ordinance number 1 of 2021. HIT, ordinance number 10 of 2021. Musuas, ordinance number 27. Muast, ordinance number 1 of 2021. GSU, which is Gwanda State University, ordinance number 4 of 2020. The recently <laughs> approved fees as provided for in the above cited ordinances are the basic minimum to run the institution of higher and special education. Remember, the Constitution obligates us to train properly. And uh, I've alluded, um, I've referred uh, your Honorable Committee to, to, to Section uh, 30C and other relevant sections to allude to that. That's, it's not only education, it's not present at the university. It's not present at the college. It is quality education. Otherwise, we are not doing justice to what we must do. So, Honorable Chair, 
or potentially the recently approved fees as provided are uh, provided in the ordinances and they will say they are the basic minimum and they will prove that. Ensuring inclusive and equitable quality education and promoting lifelong learning opportunities for all. Tertiary institutions. The fees for tertiary institutions are regulated under section seven, subsection one of the Manpower Planning and Development Act, chapter 2802, which gives the minister in consultation with the minister responsible for finance, powers to fix fees for government institutions. Procedure to review fees at tertiary institutions. The process starts with the institutions themselves, principals do consultations, academic boards and students discuss the issue and submit the recommendation to the principal. The principal will submit the recommendation to the ministry through the ministry see tertiary education programs department. This department will combine the data and the average figures um, from the institution, this will then be taken to the Premier Secretary and the Minister for approval. This pro process was undertaken by all institutions. Financing infrastructure. It is important to note that tuition fees in state universities were about 450 US dollars from 2015 to 2018. This is a very important figure. The current tuition fees of 15,000 to 20,000 is still lower than 450 charged in 2015. In terms of equivalent value, the fees have not gone up. Yet, it is correct to say the fees have not increased from what they were in 2014, as the petition says. In addition, staying in a university residence is not compulsory, and therefore it is an individual student choice to stay on campus or not. But I must strive to say this is just a matter of fact. But the issue basically is that we look at issues of affordability, reasonability, and sustainability, which basically means instead of talking about low or high, we talk about reasonability, affordability, and sustainability. So because $50 might be too much, $100 might be too much. But if it comes to matters of fact, we cannot talk about uh, it increased from 2014 because it didn't. We might talk about affordability and then we start discussing around that matter instead of talking about increases. Increases in the price of accommodation and meals are determined by the prevailing, prevailing situation on the open market and therefore the ministry does not have control over prices of food items that are bought on the open market. Although I must say now, for example, at Shinoi, at the University of Zimbabwe, we are now trying to do production so that uh, we are able to feed our students based on the production that we have and at MSU as well. As for NAS, YIT and BUSE, these are science and technology institutions which require specialized equipment and the fees charged at these institutions reflect the need to cover the cost of training materials. Remember, SDG 4, access to quality education. It's not just a meeting of people under a tree and pretending to do science. It is actually about quality education so that we comply with the constitution. Precisely what we are talking about is that fees have not changed, but that there is a certain group of people say failing to pay fees. If this is so, then we address that exactly as that matter of affordability by students who cannot afford. Then we look at it separately and we deal with it because our interest is to have our students in class because they are the brains that we need to move this country forward. Annexure 3 shows that students are paying their adjusted fees with 82% of students at each if we pay by 20 April 2021. My ministry has created 79 to protect vulnerable students currently pursuing their studies in various education and training institutions through the government graduate student loan facility, which at this moment stands at 110 million Zimbabwe dollars. And university student vacation, part-time employment arrangement to facilitate learners to work for their fees. <coughs> Honorable Chair, I want to applaud Middle State University, who have started this um, part-time employment arrangement for students. So it's up then to the students to uptake uh, these opportunities, and we are availing them at all universities. <coughs> it is not a shameful thing to work for your fees. 
it is not. Writing a poem, driving a tractor, should be just as dignified as digging a garden. So it's one of the values that we need to inculcate, that if we have a chance to use our hands and sweat and work to make our country go forward, let's do so. So this student vacation part-time employment arrangement is one of our novel interventions to say, if you are struggling with this, please stay. You can do this. We are doing a lot of construction projects. We are doing a lot of agricultural projects and so forth. So, this is very important. But furthermore, uh, Education 5.0 has transformed the physical and financial infrastructure landscape of our institutions by adding innovation hubs in the industrial park. I want to confess that at this moment, at the University of Zimbabwe, we have got a group of innovators, 40 of them, all of them under state funding. And at MSU, we have got 15 of them under state funding. We are expanding all this. And we think that with our innovation house, students who have got bright ideas will go there. What we are trying to do is to create a future of universities where the universities and colleges are financially sustainable themselves. In actual fact, universities will be scrambling for who to give a scholarship because they would be wanting them to work in their innovation hubs and industrial parks. The future is constructed today. Today is a result of the past. If we don't like that past, we have to construct a future. And this is what we are doing with our industrialization agenda. And we are very inclusive in this matter. And I was very impressed on Friday, Honorable Chair, when uh, there are 15 startups at the University of Zimbabwe where students are now going to start their own companies, and we are going to facilitate them to do that. So this is the whole agenda. Our industrial parks and innovation hubs shall be the source of income for our institution and our nation, while the student fees shall constitute a tiny part of the income equation. The current income pipeline model or for our institution as student fees and government grant, while income from business activities is standing with education 5.0, our intention is to invent this scenario. In actual way, we want the industrialization of universities to be a source of the income of the university, not the student fees. In actual fact, we'll be competing for the brightest brains to make them come and work at the university in such a way that the brain that they put in there is much more important than the little fees that they might have to pay. So this is the future that we are actually uh, constructing. And I think evidence on the ground is showing that. Decrement of tuition fees from the prevailing average of 230 per semester would threaten the achievement of SDG. Honorable Chair, there's a quotation of fees of um, 40,000 to decrease to 18,000, and the proposed decrease to 18,000, I think it's in order. Because you can see that the average is 18,000. I don't know whether, um, uh, with all due respect, whether this fact had been looked into or it was being, they were looking at proposals not the final figure of, of the things. Because the final figure is only showing me that um, uh, it's a heat and Busan who are in 23,000, something like that, 27,000 for medicine, but everybody else, the average is 18,200. In fact, it would result in education and training institutions cutting down on essential budget items, such as internet bandwidth, e-library subscriptions, workshop practice for engineering, practical lessons, sessions for life sciences, and outdoor field trips. Supervision of students on attachment would have to be totally removed. In, but as you know, one of the moves that we make is to make sure that students who are on attachment only pay 60%, not 100% of the fees. This, ladies and gentlemen, will be the date of credibility of our whole education system and training system that we all have. Now, I want to go to the almost final when I'm talking about the rationale behind fees adjustments. 
I am using feed as feeds are just being very deliberately on our renewable chain because mathematically uh, from 2014 I don't see fees increases. Because from 2014 the fees did not increase. In actual fact, they decreased to the current something like $200 if we are looking at equivalent. But no, that should not be the matter. The matter should be about affordability, sustainability, and reasonability. So, in terms of adjustments, in order to answer the question of decreasing fees by 50% and allow accommodation for students, presumed to have been unaware of the new fee structure, one has to first of all look at what it costs to run these institutions and the grant that the state provides to the universities. Fees are charged. It changes are determined by three things, sustainability, reasonability, and affordability. All of these are based on the legal processes explained earlier. Universities get their funding from three pipelines, the government, the business, and the student fees pipeline. Our effort is to try and make the fees pipeline as thin as possible and make it disappear as we move into the future. Um, Harvard University has got 25 billion endowment. It is not fall at Harvard. Students and staff and academy work so that they have this much money. Honorable Chair, I want to repeat, if we have to sustain our higher education, if we have to sustain our tertiary education, if we have to sustain our education in total, we have to work, we have to sweat. Everybody's future depends on how we behave and how we work and sweat in a higher and tertiary education. If we don't, we will be demanding things from an empty power, and I don't think that's what we want. So, I just want to talk about this equation called an institutional need. An institution, IN, which is institutional needs, is equal to government support, GS, plus student fees, SF, plus other income, plus or minus deficit. The institutions need money for their daily operations, which I'm detailing paying salaries, by teaching and learning consumables, bandwidth, licensing computer software, e-library, and so forth and so on. Whilst universities uh, get a government grant to pay salaries, they normally have to meet all other costs from internally generated resources. However, student fees and other income are generally inadequate to meet all these costs. This is because other income and student fees are generally inadequate. It, it's the deficit that generally is the cause of hardships for our state universities and colleges. I want to refer you to Annex 1 and 2, just to, I'm about to finish Honorable Chair, just to highlight certain issues. University of Zimbabwe. In order to run the University of Zimbabwe this semester, line number one, we need 2.2 billion Zimbabwe dollars. Considering that University of Zimbabwe is 23,000 students, the ideal student contribution should be 31,266. But the fees that were approved for UZ are average 16,000. The deficit per student, therefore, is 15,000, which gives the University of Zimbabwe operational deficiency of 1.7 billion from student fees, which means we have to see how we can cover the 1.7 billion. Because the, the student fees alone are leaving us with a deficit of 1.7 billion. Are I issue of technology? Running costs for HIT, 265,000 million Zimbabwe dollars. If we were going to look at student fees that are optimal, then it will be 39,500. But approved fees are 27,300. And deficit is 12,000. And based on student fees, we have to 
fund 221 million for it. So I want to summarize by saying what we need to run all our universities, just universities, this semester is about 8 billion Zimbabwe dollars. And our deficit is 5.7 billion. So if Honorable Chair Parliament would vote for 8 billion this semester for our investors, students will pay nothing. And they will say thank you. Now, for colleges, we need 585 million, and we actually per semester, and we actually have a deficit of 245 million. So these are the perfect um, honorable chair, which are very important in responding to the to the uh, petition. To ensure institutions operate on a balanced budget, universities and colleges should receive more support or charge more fees instead of cutting down on essential budget items. Otherwise, this would have adverse effects. But what we are saying is that let's see all angles so that we are able to fund sustainable education. But one of the things that we have been doing, Honorable Chair, is for every year that we have, like in 2018, when we signed the ordinances in January, no matter what happened later in that year, we didn't adjust. But what was very funny during those days is that people were now saying, ah, we are eating salsa only with soup. So who do you want to eat salsa with soup? We will do that to make sure that we don't increase an extra burden. Because the only response would be to increase fees. But you could see that from 2018 on, from 2018, 2019, 2020, once we have determined the fees at the beginning of the year, no matter what happens during the year, we would still stick and sweat and make sure that everything happens. So I think this is, the, these are the gestures that we are making to make sure that we still operate on but they cannot be born to institutions. We have to maintain a decent education system for the future of this country, as demanded by the Constitution. It is a fact that my ministry and institutions have no control over what happens on the marketplace. I've already said that. However, my ministry and its institutions have to devise strategies to ensure that there is an institutional capability in state, institutions, state universities and colleges to meet the market needs. I want to almost come to the end by saying deliberate efforts have been made by the ministry to meet institutional needs. One, by availing government funds for operations. I have a blue book here, which has got evidence that this year we really tried to support this by IT each university is at least for 25 million to enhance the e-learning uh, and so forth. In the system. A government bank student bank loan of 105 million, which is um, at CBZ. And for this loan, one thing that has been interesting is that the uptake has been low, but we are really working on making sure that we remove the obstacles uh, for the loan in terms of access. But the effort to put the loan facility has been done, and the money is there, and we have an account number. And it is 101, 105 million Zimbabwe dollars. We have reconfigured that our higher education so that it's education 5.0, giving our students an opportunity to contribute to economic uh, growth. Ministry also established this study in Zimbabwe program. Our study in Zimbabwe program is basically meant to try and make sure that we have got foreign students that are paying fees and then it subsidizes our students. This happens everywhere in the world. When you go to certain countries, they will tell you, no, come and study here, we'll give you a scholarship. Why they are doing that is that they are making sure that the residents of that country pay less. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable members, honorable chair, you will recall that in 2019, the ministry did not reduce fees upwards because that was a declared austerity measure. When Zimbabwe changed from out currency, the nominal value of the fees did not change at all. The 450 fees became 
400 increase in RTG. And uh, some citizens were beginning to put things on Twitter saying that it is hunger at universities. But we never, we say to our students and staff, let's soldier on because we can't increase the fees at this moment. Let's just eat what we have. And if it means that we eat beans, we do so. Also, let's always remember that when things affect the nation, they affect everyone. Everyone. There is no one who must be eating while the rest of the country is not eating. We must all, if we don't have enough food, let's all work for that food. And the more it, this spirit is in the youth, the better. Because then we begin to work very hard for our country. So that we don't have another one who says, give me, and me I eat. And you continue giving, and me I eat. Give me I eat, give me I eat. That spirit should die. And the faster, the better. To that effect, state universities continue to charge tuition fees ranging from Zimbabwe dollar 350 to 250 for the whole 2019. And you know, in 2019, one of the interesting things was, this is where we started the loan facility. Students did not take up the loan facility because it was very easy to pay 450. They did. But then it was now affecting the quality. You know, Lupane State University, we had to fund its graduation. Yet, we had to fund its graduation. And NAS, we had to fund its graduation. Because the student fees couldn't do. So government maintained these figures as part of the historic measures and contribution to the stabilization of the current. So, the new fees in RTG are in real terms still lower than those before. Now, just to finally summarize issue by issue, the fee structure was officially released barely four days before colleges were due to open. Fees are not paid on the first day of the semester. Normally, universities will accept fee payment arrangements where there is hardship. The bottom line is that the students must pay fees by a certain date, but also remember students were involved in the fees termination process. Number two, the address concerns raised by board of students ranging from incapacity to match a fees average from 10,000 RTGs to a staggering 40,000 RTGs. Accommodation fees is optional. Students can seek cheap accommodation and can buy food from other sources. Ministry has no control over this. Universities should not be forced to charge a sustainable fee. What is needed is putting in place resources to support needy students. This is the subject of how do we support needy students. Government, we have done so through the loan facility, for example. Number three, that the increment came out without student consultation of the representative councils. I want to submit, Honorable Chair, that I have minutes of all fees revision committees, which are some. Maybe some people were not consulted, but that is another issue where do you come to the minister or do you go back to university and sort out things at that university. So I think it is very important. What is very important, Honorable Chair, is to make sure that Whatever we do, we respect due process. It is very important to have a disciplined nation, to know that this stage is this, that stage is that, that stage is that. And that is guaranteed by the parliament of Zimbabwe. And we are very happy that so far, in, in, in as far as I'm concerned, honestly, our parliamentary portfolio committee has supported higher education is supported tertiary education, both students and staff, to make sure that we have continuity and we also have a revolution in the way we give our education. The petition comes amid the background in, of an increase in inevitable owing to incapacitation and lack of balanced diet, as was said last term on campuses. Last term, the lack of balanced diet was again because last year we refused the temptation to increase health fees mid-year. So we said, let's all suffer, but we will do our issue. And let's not go back to the parents and say, give us more fees because we want to eat. 
I will talk about eating here. It's very important that we, we anecdote this, this question. Diet issues are discussed at universities. Students have a say in what they eat as long as they can pay for it. If you say let's eat you full chicken, it's no problem. But the chicken costs $10. So pay. No problem. If they want a three cost meal and are able to pay, the university will make it. Universities should not be expected to serve food. They don't get money. Because if let's when whenever we are talking about money, we evade the question of the source of that money. Let's talk about the source of the money. Every time we demand money, let's talk about its source. So that we see whether we can we are an independent state. It basically means if the money is little, let's work and make it more. And when we make it more and it takes us more. Actually, I'm sure I agree with two cents. The increment will result in massive dropouts, if not addressed. Students should utilize the student loan facility scheme specifically designed for them by government. Students with specific problems should approach the student affairs for help. There is always sometimes this tendency that something happens at campus. If it goes to the president, they have skipped the dean, they have skipped the provost chancellor. They've skipped the registrar, they've skipped the council, they've skipped the minister, they've skipped the portfolio committee, they are going to the president. This is one of the issues that we should be addressing as a nation to say, when we set up procedures, let's follow them. Otherwise, we will be busy every time listening to things that could have been solved elsewhere. Decrement from 40,000 RRTGS to 18,000 RRTGS in order to maintain institutional capacity and ensure quality education and promote lifelong learning. The state university's fees are very really reasonable because I've told you the average of our fees. In actual fact, I don't know how the students calculated this because our average is 18,200 and they are proposing 18,000. So we are not in disagreement. Number seven, the government must bear in mind the importance of education in our national growth, education basics of its being a right and not a privilege in itself, a repulsion, not the victim of privatization. This was under the when the constitution, when the constitution was explained that the right to further education is fettered to availability of resources. Power struggles for the so-called Vision 2030 with the school dropout due to lack of finance is imminent. Yes, beneficiaries of a free education, which was understood to be right. Our response to this is that we don't know anything about this. All we know is that education has never been free. Somebody has to pay for it. Students are now self-funding because our parents have been jobless. They have increased the fees without proper consultation with the direct pro provoking to the youth's future. The Honorable Chair, we don't understand this language. Number 11, institutions should seek to self-finance themselves from projects ranging from funding, designing new projects, so as to reduce the statement of asking students to pay more. I like this. This is actually the debate that we should be having. Only very old universities like Harvard, Stanford, and others have built huge endowments to fall back to in hard times. Even in this university, you'll find 40 to 50 percent is operating fees. But, Honorable Chair, this is actually the discussion that we need. We must be making. You know, we have been making as a nation discussions like, give me, and the other one says, I don't have, and the other one, give me, and they know, I don't have, and the other one, give me check, and then I don't have. That is a moribund argument. Let's talk about how we make money available. I think as students, more debate and as lecturers and staff, more debate should be on how we shall industrialize this country. And that's the debate and we make resources available and we move forward. Justified or unjustified if these sites are a direct cause of inflation and we are creating a problem to solve another problem. This is disputed because we have not increased any fees. Economically, fees are hikes is not the solution to the problem, but good and sound administration, which, which plans for future disasters with available resources. 
We don't understand the essence of the question. However, we understand that the government is working towards progressive realization of the right to education. Our institutions are managed well and are prudent in the way they use the resources. If there is a contrary, let's debate that. We believe in compensating the education sector more than any other ministry because they, that's where the solution lies. Honorable Chair, we agree. We have no dispute with this. Most of the parents are living or vending to put food fees and other human needs on the table. Therefore, the proposed fee structure will mean that our children will pull out of the tertiary institution. We don't understand this question. The issue is, let's discuss on the ways in which we help the needy. Because it's in our interest. So the discussion should not be, don't, Mwachiti, yes, I will do. Don't, it's about discussing because it's our country to be here. Our government needs to realize that by sacrificing for educating our children in the harsh economic environment, we are feathering the nation building agenda, which is encouraged by His Excellency the President. Agree. 17. Apart from tertiary fees, we have other children who are looking forward to ask for fees. The government used to give grants as a way of mitigating this cost. And we have said mitigated measures have been given. But at the same time, grants come from taxes. And we must know that in order, that's why we say every college and every university, and the bill that you passed. Uh, Honorable Chair, is that with the Mental Development Planning Act is saying all universities, all colleges should have some industrial enterprise. It is at that enterprise where people, I am sure that in the next five to ten years, this debate of two ISIS is going to fall away. But it will take sweat. We have to work again, I say. There is no bad who just dishes and other ones are receiving and complaining. We'll not get things done by fretting and complaining. We'll do a lot done by being focused and very productive discussions. So, some of us are members of the civil service and our salaries are a quarter of what is demanded. We are talking about running universities based on sustainability, reasonability, and affordability. I don't think this ministry has any leverage on civil service salaries. I think it's a debate which is beyond our scope. The opening date of the exam classes appears to be rushed. Move. Colleges should wait and assess second wave of the pandemic. Our colleges have um, many faculties that will be many students in the spread of the virus. Nobody has the wisdom to know what will happen tomorrow. We are all trying to survive during this very difficult period. And our students and staff have done great things by doing the COVID-19 response strategy. And our institutions have actually been on the forefront. And I want to thank all our staff and students we have worked very hard to prevent a catastrophe in this country in terms of COVID-19. And we want to make sure that we continue doing so. We urge the ministry to allow some institutions to allow accommodation for students who were unaware of the new fee structure. I think we explained this issue. It's go back to the universities and discuss. A student who wish at some point, that the minister will be willing to meet with students and listen to their concerns and ideas. Last year, we met SRC at Management Training Bureau on Wednesday, 19 February 2020. And we are always ready to do so procedurally by making sure that we respect that there are structures at institutions. We find it disheartening that your ministry has decided to ignore the existence of structures and make decisions on behalf of the students without soliciting their deserved voice. I have explained in the legal process that was taken to determine the fees. It is very important that we are legal and factual. Retract the secular and consequently the unilateral declared fee structure of 2021. We did not 
5 milliseconds. Agent leader, the same institution convened meetings with their own respective SRCs whose agenda shall be in the agreement on the 2021 peace structure. This was done, and the evidence is here. Honorable Chair, I just want to finish off by looking at um, uh, table on page 22 that um, our veterinary in medicinal sciences in 2019 the fees was 7,875 which was equivalent to 450 US dollars. Today it is 20,000 Zimbabwe dollars which is equivalent to 236 US dollars. Science, engineering and technology the fees in 2019 was 7,000 Zimbabwe dollars equivalent to 400 US dollars during that time. Now it is 17,000 Zimbabwe dollars equivalent to 402 US dollars. Arts and humanities, there were 6,125, which was equivalent to 350 US dollars, but now it's 15,000 equivalent to 178 US dollars. I want to finish off by Annex Chapter 4, whereby I talk about um, tuition in Australia. The tuition in Australia per semester is 19,800 US dollars. In Canada, it's 4,000 US dollars per semester. In New Zealand, it's 17,000 US dollars per semester. In the United Kingdom, it's 20,000 US dollars per semester. In the United States, it's 21,000 US dollars per semester. In South Africa, it's 4,000 US dollars per semester. In Botswana, it's 3,200 US dollars per semester. In Zambia, it's 1,700 US dollars per semester. In Zimbabwe, the average now is 200 US dollars. I thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Minister. Uh, thank you for your very detailed presentations. And there were very important points that came up to the course to the petition. So it is now time for students. But before we go there, I think to important issues that we must consider when we are doing our responses. The Minister, in more than two uh, 